an annual survey of adults and teens, the toothbrush was voted the number one invention people cannot live without, beating out the computer, cell phone and even automobile. So this emphasizes how important toothbrush is to us. Toothbrush and oral hygiene aids have evolved through ages. Over the years, many dental myths have been doing the round regarding toothbrush and other oral hygiene methods. So let's take a look at all these dental myths and try to unravel it by backing it through scientific researches. Some say hard toothbrush cleans better. There are about three to four types of toothbrush available in the market, ranging from ultra soft to soft, medium and hard. So which is the best one? Soft toothbrush is quite gentle to the tooth. Owing to its elastic nature, it can enter the gingival sulcus, that is the region of the gums surrounding the tooth, and clean in those regions. It is also gentle to the gingiva or the gums. On the other hand, a hard toothbrush is supposed to be more effective as it is believed that it can effectively clean stains and debris from the tooth surface. But if used improperly, that is if, if undue force is applied, it can damage the tooth surface as the enamel, that is the outer cover of the tooth, is quite brittle and that can lead to abrasion, breaking down of the external tooth surface, damaging your tooth and causing sensitivity. Now let's take a look at some studies associated with the hardness and softness of a toothbrush and its effect on tooth. In a study published by Ozerani, Iravan and Damianti, titled The Effect of Toothbrush Bristle Stiffness on Nano-Hybrid Surface Roughness, published in 2017 in IOP Conference Series Journal of Physics, they concluded that roughness occurs more rapidly when brushing with medium bristle toothbrushes than when brushing with soft bristle toothbrushes. So by using a soft or medium brush, you can prevent your tooth from getting damaged. Whereas if you use the hard brush, there are more chances of you damaging your tooth and harming your gingiva. ADA has laid down certain specifications for a toothbrush. So based on these specifications, you can choose or select a toothbrush. But the head of the toothbrush should be about 1 to 1 4 inch long and 5 by 16 to 3 by 8 inch wide. The bristles should be arranged in 2 to 4 rows with about 5 to 12 tufts in each row and each row containing 80 to 86 bristles. Now obviously you cannot count all the bristles in a toothbrush but this gives you a vague idea how your toothbrush should be. After toothbrush, now let's talk about the next auxiliary used for cleaning teeth. That is toothpaste or tooth powder. Some people advocate toothpaste and others advocate tooth powder. So it should be used. Toothpaste has quite many ingredients in it such as fluoride which aids in remineralization of the tooth and prevents it from caries. Desensitizing agents that block the dentinal tubules and prevent sensitivity. And tartar control agents. Tartar is a hard rough substance, brownish black in color which get deposited on the tooth due to improper cleaning. And toothpaste have these tartar control agents that prevent deposition of tartar. On the other hand, tooth powder has stronger and more effective detergent effect that is in small amount only it can clean better but again does that overshadow the other benefits of toothpaste so here is a comparison between the ingredients of toothpaste and tooth powder so as you can see in case of toothpaste or gels the abrasive content is quite less as compared to tooth powder which contain about 90 to 98 percent of the abrasive content the detergent content is also more in tooth powder about one to six percent so yes tooth powder is more effective in cleaning but what about the other factors like fluoride which is present in toothpaste and tartar control agents and desensitizing agents which are absent in case of tooth powder so so this data provides an insight that tooth powder, though effective, is quite abrasive in nature and can damage your tooth and gingiva, whereas toothpaste is gentle with adequate proportion of the ingredients. A study done in France titled Abrasion of Six Dentrifices Measured by Vertical Scanning Interference Microscopy, which was published in the Journal of Applied Oral Science in 2013, they concluded that toothpaste induced a limited abrasion 
whereas tooth powders induced a significantly higher roughness linked to the size of the abrasive particles. In another article, Abrasivity of Dentrifices and Umptate, which was published in 2016 SRM Journal of Research in Dental Sizes, the authors concluded that various causes may cause abrasion and one of these is abrasivity of toothpaste. Selecting a paste with a low RDA can prevent both sensitivity and structural compromises. RDA is radioactive dentine abrasivity and based on this index, toothpaste can be low abrasive, medium abrasive, highly abrasive and few others which can cause harmful effects. So they made a comparison of various toothpaste and procured the RDA index and in this list you can see the values which range between 0 to 70 are the low abrasive ones so a toothpaste with low abrasive index should be used whereas the harmful limit as prescribed by ADA is 150 to 250 which should be prohibited some say brush harder to clean better well as we all know the tooth is made up of enamel and dentine which are the heart tissues Hard tissues can sustain more amount of force as compared to soft tissues. The soft tissues are the gums or the gingiva that surround the tooth. Now, as we talked about a hard toothbrush, similarly, if you use a toothbrush and brush harder, that is you apply undue force while brushing your teeth, that can damage the tooth causing abrasion. So, tartar is rough substance which gets accumulated in the gingival sulcus in between the gums and the tooth and it is difficult to remove. In order to remove that, some people tend to brush harder. Well, similarly to using a hard toothbrush, if you brush harder, that is you apply undue force while cleaning your teeth, it can affect the hard tissues as well as the soft tissues. In response to this stress, the gingiva gets irritated and tends to recede causing gingival recession and denudation of the tooth surface which can lead to hypersensitivity and pocket formation. Thus, it is advised to gently clean your teeth and use proper technique to adequately clean the sulcus area as well. In a study in 2003 published in the International Dental Journal, Can Toothbrushing Damage Your Health? and its effects on oral and dental tissues, the authors concluded that wear of enamel and dentine can be dramatically increased if toothbrushing follows an erosive challenge. It is only under over or abusive use or when combined with erosion that significant harm may be thus caused. In normal use, it must be concluded that the benefits of toothbrushing far outweigh the potential harm. In a similar study in 2014, titled The Role of Oral Hygiene Does Toothbrushing Harm? The authors concluded that toothbrushing frequency and force as well as toothbrush hardness were shown to act as cofactors in the multifactorial etiology of non-cervical carious lesions. That is tooth abrasion which can be influenced by the physical properties of the toothpaste and toothbrush and also patient related factors such as toothbrushing frequency and the force of brushing. So these were a few dental myths associated with toothbrush and toothpaste. In future videos, we shall discuss other myths associated with dental hygiene practice. I hope you have liked this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button to show support to this small initiative of imparting oral health.